I remember when we found out that Blue Story was the highest grossing urban film of all time in the UK. My kids were just like, yeah, dad, you're number one. You can know, man, you know music weren't for you, fam. He said it like it was nothing, but he doesn't know deep down he just killed my whole dreams and ambitions. <laughs> if you love him or hate him, you have to rate him. I was like Ian Wright, they used to call me yeah, like Ian Wright. Right. not Ian Wright at all. It was a mad thing. Don't yeah, yeah, listen to you don't know what he's talking about. I know everyone says they grew up in poverty, but it was deep going from house to house. We go from a hostel, then you get temporary housing for maybe six to nine months, and then you go to another place for a year, and then we finally got our permanent residence in Deptford. It's kind of nice to know we finally settled. Yo. Yo, what are you saying? You saying we're back. We're Homecoming, back to where yeah? this began, you get me? Do you know what's mad? We was in secondary school. I was in year seven, he was in year 11. He had a rap group, I think they were called XTL or something. And they were always rapping. Even him, we'd be on the back of the bus. Headphones on, just rapping to DMX loudly. Music just played a massive part, man. I remember I went to one of my friend's houses and he was playing Bone Funks, yeah, Crossroads. And I just remember thinking, this song is crazy. I just couldn't believe how fast they was rapping, the melody to it, and I just thought, nah, this, play it again, play it again. What was nice about this? This was only Crossroads people would be here. Man, we used to grab the strings for the goals. Yeah, you grab the string and you put them and you back put it and around. then you turn it into gold. You turn it into gold. You goals. stay here, just take shots. It was actually sick. I loved all the rappers that told stories, so I love Biggie, I love Pac, I love Nas, I love Jay. Like, you know on the album there's always going to be one story song, so I would skip forward for that story song and I think, yeah, this is, I can picture it. But none of them made visuals to the story songs. So I remember thinking, if I ever grow up and become a rapper, I'm going to do visuals to my story songs and make them like films. Boy, spring back memories, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> when was the last time we both stood in this place together? <laughs> that was 16, 16 years ago, bro, when we done. Jason's lyrics, aka Free Jason, for mm -hmm. my brother who got incarcerated for a long time in prison. It was a big moment for the borough because we had like everyone from the area mm. come out wearing Free Jason t shirts. And that was literally the first video from the Lewis Jim Borough to Channel go on Channel U. So from the blue cage to the blue story premiere, that's, that's like a trial. So that was a big win. Take your shots, bang. I was like Ian Wright, they used to call me yeah, like you Ian Wright. You weren't not Ian Wright at all. It was a mad thing. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't listen to me, you don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> All the kids could come out the back and play and every, all the parents could look at their kids playing. So you could look back and keep an eye on your child. Yeah, man, when I think about it, it's kind of nostalgic because it was a good time in my life when I think about it. So we never really had a lot, but the one thing that my mum would make, she would make soup with grand rice to last three, five days. Rice and grand rice just became the only meals I thought existed in the world until I went to school. I went to all black primary school and it was just Jamaicans and Nigerians. The one thing was though that's changed, Nigerians were always the butt of the jokes in these. Like we was like, I feel like we was outnumbered like a hundred to one or something. I definitely got on with him. We clicked, we clicked when we met. And he's just, just a good guy, he's a friendly guy, man. When he first started doing music, I was always by his side. Nice. <laughs> 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 I was by his side. Oh, sorry. He was, was by it? my side. I was by his side. Tell the story. He was Tell by my story. side. I stopped rapping for years, maybe five, six, seven years or something. And then I remember speaking to him outside my house where, where I lived at the time. I said, oh man, imagine man, something music could have happened. He goes, oh man, you know music weren't for you, fam. Music weren't for you. And he said, it, he said it was such a throwaway, like it was nothing, but he doesn't know deep down he just killed my whole dreams and ambitions. <laughs> Going to the Blue Story premiere for me was a lovely moment. I felt like a, like a, not just like an older brother. Sorry, did he say you felt like an older brother? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the, how I felt. You're not saying I'm your older brother. I'm not saying that's what I felt like, really. He's younger than me. No, but don't worry, I don't know. <laughs> My dad was a big part growing up. The one thing he drilled into me was don't be lazy and read your books. He was always basically telling me you have to work twice as hard in this country as a white person to just be seen as even. It made me want to work hard. I always go that extra mile and I always put my best foot forward. When I was younger, my dad would literally go to the street market and buy me and my brothers and sisters all the Walt Disney films. It was like a magical world, it was like a getaway. Put this film in, I wonder what this one's going to be about. I started getting the rhythm of what Walt Disney was doing in each story and how a story kind of works, and I felt like I learned from things like that. To get to the point that he's at, it's just amazing. So anyone that's seen his growth will know that what he's done is amazing and just know that it is possible. Like my favourite movie of all time is Goodfellas. You see when I look at Goodfellas, Casino, I just think, ah, three hours and it went like, like that. 
filmmakers that inspire me today, I've been really loving Ryan Coogler's whole trajectory. You know, the whole Fruitville to Creed to Black Panther is something I'm really trying to, I won't say imitate, but I would be happy if it went that way. How Fruitville Station was Ryan Coogler's personal film, Blue Story to me was my personal film that I feel like every filmmaker should get their personal story out first. I like F. Gary Gray. Um, I think he's just very underrated and very sick. And I love Straight Outta Compton. I think that's the best music-inspired artist film ever. Hughes Brothers and John Singleton, those were the first black directors where their films really made a difference to me. And then growing up, I realised that their all inspiration came from the doors that Spike Lee opened for them. So I love Spike Lee for what he done for that. This is him. He hasn't changed for no one. He came to college and told a story, and his story actually made you visualise it. He made you visualise it to the point of like, that was sick, like that actually happened. If you love him or hate him, you have to rate him. I told him my first child for the first time. So it was emotional because I wasn't sure if I was ready to be a dad at the time. But when I saw him, I just knew no matter what, I need to be better. You can, you can do it all, you can do everything. You pursue storytelling and then attend to a big thing where you're getting sent to Jay-Z. So, yeah, I was really happy. Proud of my dad for everything he'd done. I want my kids to see me as a, as a dad who worked hard and done everything for them. And I want them to know work rate. Same thing my dad told me, I told them, don't be lazy. But I want kids who don't even know me to say, you know, well, I only picked up a camera because I saw that rap man movie. I want to just inspire the next generation to inspire the next generation. And I want people to know that all these films coming out, Last Tree Farming, Blue Story, Top Boy, they are opening doors. Five years from now, there's going to be a hundred rap mans, you know? There's going to be people 10 times better than me doing their thing at bigger levels because they're seen as possible now, man. And my biggest thing is that the next generation can come from an area like this, from Deptford, and go ahead and make massive impacts with their creativity. So our journey has just begun. The new generation has just started.